Learning to code is incredibly difficult because there is a minefield of information out there. Do we drive? Do we solid? Is it XP? Do we functional program? Is it object oriented programming? Which paradigm do we go with? What do they even mean? What are all these acronyms? It's confusing. Now over the last three years, I've gone from nothing to a senior front end software engineer. I went through a career change and I made a lot of mistakes along the way. What I'm here to tell you about today is the mistakes I made so you can go on to make new ones and not the same ones. So if you're new around here, please like and subscribe because it massively helps and I do love bringing this content to you all and I'm planning to do for the next year so you don't want to miss those updates of when my new videos get dropped. Now to get straight to it, the first mistake I made when learning how to code was not picking a clear path. Now when I'm talking about a clear path, I'm talking about what area of tech you want to work in. So do you want to be a DevOps engineer, a mobile development engineer, do you want to be a data engineer, a front end engineer, a data scientist, whatever Whatever it is have a clear defined path of where you want to be in a year or two now that's not to say that you can't try something different or you won't be doing something different in a couple of years but in your early years or when you're trying to get better at coding and when you're trying to really really focus it's good to pick a path because then you can pick the learning around it so say for example you want to be a front-end engineer you'd obviously pick JavaScript and the libraries that went frameworks that went with it and to be a back-end engineer you'd pick Java or Node or something along those lines and Express or Spring Boot or whatever framework or library went around that same with mobile engineering it gives you the chance to focus pick your resources pick your language and stay on a defined path so if there's one thing that i'm going to say to you to take away from this video is pick a path second mistake i made when learning how to code directly correlates to the first one is not picking a language specific to what i wanted to learn so i was very eager you know i jumped from one thing to the other oh data engineering oh data science oh javascript oh swift you know I'd, I'd move about and i'd build different projects and i'd do half a udemy course or i'd do 45 minutes of udemy, udemy course then i'd go by six more in six different languages just because i thought well I, I didn't have any focus i didn't have a clear defined path or goal now Really, really focusing on a language allows you not only to become obviously very experienced with it, but it allows you just to become second nature to understand the problems that you can solve, how to solve them. And you become very, very efficient in writing code or solving problems. And it's not to say you need to be a master in a specific language, but when you get good and you really dig into a language, you learn things which then correlate to other languages. So you'll start to pick up things like, okay, so a function more or less works as a function across all languages. And uh, quite often the syntax is quite similar. So once you've got really good at one, picking up another becomes a lot easier, but focus on one language to start because it pays off massively. The third mistake I made, which sort of relates to the first one. So the first relates to the second relates to the third is not picking a good learning resource. So I jump about between sort of different teachers and different teaching styles and different courses. But what I didn't realize is that it wasn't the courses that were very sort of different from each other a lot of the content is quite often the same it's the delivery style of what the teacher is delivering or what the tutor is delivering so what I would say to you is if you're looking for a course don't look for the content look for the delivery style of the tutor so whether that's Brad of uh, Traverse Media of YouTube who I absolutely love I follow a lot of his content because he's very straight to the point very sort of non-fluff non bull crap I love that type of learning that works for me or whether it's Mosh Hamadani or whether it's Max Minimus of Udemy me or whether it's zero to mastery whoever it is pick somebody whose teaching style and delivery style you enjoy and then stick to their content stick to their resources because it will help you instead of trying to jump about thinking that you're going to fill a gap with somebody else's boring content it won't you'll just move about and move about and move about until you come back in a big circle to the person who was actually teaching you something fourth mistake i made when learning how to code was actually trying to run before i could walk so this correlates to the second point about getting really good with the language. So getting really good with the language, it's not just about syntax. It's not just about I can write a function, I can do a for loop or whatever it is that you want to do. It's also about the nuances. So try and solve basic problems in the language. Once you start solving problems, you can start understanding the code more, you start understanding your language more, and then you can start doing more complicated things. Now, when I'm talking about this fourth step, when I'm talking about learning to walk before you could run, start simple build small projects, solve small problems. As you progress, you get better and you start using more advanced term, uh, technology. Say for example, most recently I've been working with state machines, but if I tried to jump into this three years ago, I probably would have never got into coding. I would have quit and left and forget it. But I'm at a point now where I can take on advanced cost concepts and I can take on advanced design patterns because I've built the experience over time by learning how to walk before running. The fifth mistake I made when learning how to code is not related to the fourth one. It's not taking my time to fully understand why I was doing what I was doing. So this goes back to our work example. Why are we using Monolith? Why are we using Turbo Reaper? Why are we using micro front ends? 
I wasn't questioning the architecture enough so that I wasn't building the relevant experience to answer those questions when it came my time to lead those design systems or do the interview questions where they were asking more advanced concepts. What I'd done in the last six months to a year is question everything. So if we're gonna build a new project, why are we using Next.js? Why are we using Turbo Repo? Why are we using PMPM over Yarn? Or why are we using Yarn over PMPM? What difference does it make if we're using micro front ends versus uh, on the front end? And why, are we using, why aren't we using microservices on the back end? These are all valid questions. So dig deep and ask those questions because that experience will grow with you over time. And that is what builds you into a better engineer over the coming years. It's the culmination of all the experience and the questions that you ask. Now, one very important thing to notice on that as well is how well it serves you in interviews. So when you go and do a systems design interview, imagine you could memorize all the lingo in the world, but if you don't have any proactive experience in it, what's it gonna mean? But if you go into an interview as someone who knows microservices, who knows micro front ends because you've worked in it, you understand decoupled architecture and event-driven development, you can answer questions in a way that will blow them away because it's from pure raw experience. So dig in and really ask those questions. Number six on my list of mistakes of what I did wrong when learning how to code was getting burnt out. It's really important for you to know when to take a break, when to stop, when to move on to something different, or when to just turn your laptop off and walk away. The last thing you wanna do is overexert yourself burn out your brain it's a very mentally dra draining job especially when you're trying to learn on the side as well just take a break from your computer even if it's a whole weekend you will you will thank yourself for it massively some of my best code or some of my best problem solving or some of the most complicated problems that i've ever solved in work came from walking outside because i'm still thinking about the problem but i'm interacting with nature i'm getting exercise my blood's flowing and it gives me a chance to really think through the problem with a clear mind it doesn't mean that i go straight back to the computer i take a break completely and the next day i I go with that fresh brain and fresh thoughts i implement a new strategy and nine times out of ten it works brilliantly don't burn yourself out by trying to do too much i made that mistake it's not healthy and it's not proactive for your career take a break now i'm going to end on number seven number seven for the mistakes that i made when learning how to code and this is a big one comparing yourself to others maybe i should have put this one first but especially when I was starting now, I didn't write my first line of code till I was 29. I was against people 22, 23, 24 who'd been coding since they were like 12. I felt massively out of place and I compared myself to others every day. It's a very, very detrimental mindset. It wasn't conductive to conducive to growth. It was the negative. I ended up hit really, really bad with imposter syndrome because of things like comparing myself to other people. It's important to remember you are on your journey. You are where you're supposed to be just the way I'm on my journey and I am where I'm supposed to be. We'll meet somewhere in the middle, but I stopped, le I learned to stop comparing myself to others and my career has grown a lot because of it. Now I learn from people who are 10 years younger than me or who are 10 years older than me and I, I appreciate the experience that I pick from them regardless of the person's background, age, etc, etc. So that's it on the list. I really hope you appreciate and you took something from this. I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you've got any mistakes that you've made which you think could contribute to somebody else who may read them or if you've done something really, really brilliant that you think could contribute and help somebody sort of elevate their career, share that as well. I'd really love to hear it. Please like and subscribe. I really, really appreciate it. Catch you in the next one.